G'day guys, just uh, Rob again, uh, doing another video. Haven't done a video for a little while, um, so I thought I'd better get one done. It's uh, sort of end, end of the month, end of October uh, 2012, so I thought I might just do a video of sort of all the things that I've, uh, all the movies that I've sort of picked up uh, over the last month. Uh, I've actually got uh, quite a few here. <laughs> Uh, found a lot of really good deals and stuff, so I sort of, you know, think, oh, that's that's good. I better, I better buy that. So that's sort of been been happening a lot over the last month. So I've got a huge stack of stuff here. I won't actually sort of show everything that I've got. Uh, some things I haven't haven't sort of watched yet, so I, you know, I don't, don't really want to, you know. Sorry, something I haven't sort of haven't sort of watched yet. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get started. Um, okay, so since it's sort of Halloween time, I did sort of pick up a few sort of sort of scary ones, a few sort of horror related uh, style ones. Uh, first one here is actually one I haven't actually watched yet. I actually, I actually sort of got it about probably 10 minutes ago just before making the video just came in the post. Um, I'm not sure why it took so long. I sort of put, put this in like a pack of stuff and the other ones came, you know, reasonably quick, but this one took extra, I don't know, extra three or four days to be sent for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so it's uh, Trick or Treat, which I've heard a, a lot of really good things about. Uh, I just don't have a chance to, to watch it yet. I think it's got uh, I think it's like three or four sort of short stories sort of set on Halloween night. Uh, but I have sort of heard you know a lot of people think uh, Andrew Ballin has uh, recommended it to me and my friend Chris, um, the Blue Ray Maniac. I think he uh, he recommended it too. So I look forward to sort of watching that one when I get a chance. Uh, another, another one that's another sort of horror one that's sort of been recommended to me. And I, I did sort of get around actually watching this one. Uh, I got the Collector, um, yeah, um, which I thought was actually a pretty good movie. Uh, I'm not necessarily, as I said before, I'm not sort of a fan of you know sort of the Saw movies or sort of you know torture porn type <laughs> type movies. This I think this is written by the the writers of uh, Saw Four, Five, and Six. Um, but uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Essentially, um, um, the premise is. Uh, but there's like a family, and I think they've, I think they've moved into like a new house, and uh, there's a guy there that's sort of helping them sort of you know, fix up things, you know, fix doors, or fix windows, and you know, sort of stuff. So he's sort of doing odd jobs for them, and uh, he sort of finds out that the family's actually going away. I think it's going away for the weekend or something, and uh, the father's like a jeweler, so I think the the guy sort of decides, oh, I might break in, you know, crack open the safe, and you know, see if I can steal something, you know. I think because his family's going through some, some troubles and uh, a few money problems, so he's got to, you know, he's being a bit, <laughs> taking a risk and perhaps breaking in. And anyway, so he goes in there in the middle of the night to, you know, open the safe, and uh, he sort of finds that he's sort of in there halfway through, you know, opening the safe. He finds, he works out there's actually a killer downstairs, uh, sort of torturing the family down, you know, and he, so he's. Decides, well, I better sort of you know try and help the family escape type thing. So that's that's pretty much the premise of the movie. You sort of, you know, him just in there trying to find a way to sort of get the family out, trying you know try and save them, I suppose. And um, but I thought, yeah, it was actually, actually pretty good. Um, a lot of sort of tension to it, and you know, you know, really sort of want to know what was going to happen next. And uh, you know, because the guy he's trying to sort of sneak around without sort of um, you know. Alerting the killer, I suppose, and stuff, um, which I suppose is a bit, yeah, a bit, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure the killer would have heard him. He was sort of upstairs walking around, making a bit of noise. I'm sure the killer would have heard him. But anyway, you know, it's, it's only a movie, isn't it? Um, but yeah, definitely, yeah, not, not too bad Apart from the, you know, lots of sort of, you know, torture scenes. But anyway, well, that's yeah, that's definitely a, a good one, which I did actually enjoy. Um, I got another one. Um, let the right one in, which is actually the original I think the Swedish version. I think of it was like a remake done, American remake. I think it's just called Let Me In. I think that I think that one's called. Um, I haven't actually, I haven't actually sort of had a chance to watch this one yet. Um, but I'll see. I should get around to watching it. Uh, see what you know. It's, it's sort of much different, perhaps to the. Uh, so I, do, I do already have the the, uh, the American remake. I have did watch that and did actually did quite enjoy that one actually. Uh, I'm looking forward to sort of watching that one, see what it's like. Uh, this three is actually like, not necessarily perhaps some sort of horror I suppose, or more of a sort of a comedy tr uh, trilogy type thing. Um, I haven't sort of, I've been sort of watched these films for quite a few years. Um, got the uh, sort of the first three, uh, 
uh, Toxic Avenger movies, uh, which I thought was always they're all sort of cheesy fun when I was sort of watched them uh, a few years ago. But yeah, part got a goal three parts, part one, part two, part three. Um, just yeah, very sort of sort of cheesy and fun. I think one I remember it's about like a, a nerdy guy and he's sort of um, he's like it's, you know picked on and stuff. Uh, but eventually he gets I think he gets sort of uh, dumped in like some barrels of uh, toxic waste. So he sort of grows up, you know, grows up to be this big sort of uh, oh, a bit of sun there. Um, bit of you know, bit of sort of big tough looking guy. <laughs> he sort of goes around and sort of wreaks a bit of revenge on on these people, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sort of watch rewatching these again because they're always always sort of good good sort of movies to watch. Um, next few uh, are actually a big pile of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, which I I also sort of consider myself to be a fairly big sort of uh, Schwarzenegger fan. But I mean, obviously, I've sort of seen all the you know Terminator and uh, Total Recall and Predator, you know, all, all these sort of bigger ones, but bigger sort of movies. But I've actually sort of seen a lot of his other one, other sort of his first movies and stuff. So I did sort of big quite a big pile of them. Um, that's what I got on is a uh, raw deal. Um, I think it's one of his sort of very first, one of his second movie or something, second or third movie he was ever in. Uh, I thought it was actually pretty good. Uh, some of his, some of Arnie's acting's a bit, a bit off, but uh, other than that, yeah, really good action scenes and a uh, good sort of flick. I think uh, Arnie used to be in like a, he used to be in the FBI, but for some reason he got sort of thrown out. And um, one of his sort of, I think his boss comes to see him and says, "Oh." If you I think he's got to try and if you uh, if we track the mob or something and you know find out some dirt on them, we we'll, we'll we'll let you come back in the FBI type thing, you know. Uh, but I thought it was actually pretty good, you know, good action and things blowing up and big guns and stuff, you know. So that was that was pretty good. Uh, other one, I, ooh, other one I watched um, another Arnie one, uh, Red Heat, which a lot of people said was a pretty bad movie, but I I just thought it was actually a pretty good movie. I thought. Um, I suppose it plays like a Russian, uh, I think like, like a, I think it's like a drug dealer, uh, sort of, sort of kills his partner and sort of flees to America, so Arnold's got to go over to America and try and, you know, try and get him back, try and capture him and get him back and, um, sort of, you know, James Belushi sort of, uh, sort of kind of like a sort of buddy cop type movie, you know, they've got to sort of team up, they're, you know, obviously they're different people and they, you know, have to try and get along to try and, you know, try and hunt down this guy and, uh, so I was sending it back to Russia, but oh, I thought it was actually a pretty good, pretty good flick that one. Uh, the next ones I haven't, I haven't actually sort of seen these ones. Uh, End, of, End of Days, uh, another anime one which I've never sort of seen before, which I'll get a chance to watch at some point. Uh, the Last Action Hero, which is another one I've, I've never sort of seen before. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. Uh, a lot of people do sort of say this is a really good movie, um, so I'll get around to that watching that one at some point, I'm sure. Uh, then we've got The Sixth Day, which I've never sort of seen before either. <laughs> Watch it at some point. Uh, also, then also got um, uh, Predator, the original 1986 uh, movie, which I, I, I sort of wanted to sort of buy the, 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 the box set, you know, the, the whole pack of them, you know, the first, second, and uh, the new sort of Predator, oh, Predators movie, which came out a few years ago. Um, but I decided, I just, yeah, this is pretty cheap, so I just sort of got this one, and uh, this is one of, probably one of my favourite movies, I think, this one. I used to watch this all the time when I was sort of in uh, in high school and college and stuff. Um, a lot of my friends were sort of fans of it too, and they were all sort of quoting, all, quoting the lines, and uh, especially the, you know, the, the, the jokes, the, the pussy jokes that one of the characters makes all the time. That my friend used to say that all the time. <laughs> um... But yeah, I think this is a really good sort of movie, really good action and sci-fi type movie, and uh, I just really like like the Predator character. I thought he was just really interesting, and um, yeah, just definitely a uh, good flick. Um, so I got that one, and also, also and also got the Predators one as well. I picked that up as well recently. Um, I thought it actually wasn't too bad of a movie. A lot of people aren't seem to like this one much, but. Um, I thought it was, you know, pretty good. It wasn't necessarily as good as the first one, I suppose, but um, I thought it was, you know, a pretty good film. Uh, very sort of similar to the first one, I guess. Similar sort of premise, I suppose. Um, 
But yeah, they're definitely uh, not all too bad. Could have been really bad, I suppose, but anyway. Um, they also got you know, same sort of vein, got the first two, or the, or the two, Aim vs. Predator uh, movies, which I also, also didn't want the first one. I thought the first one was actually a pretty good movie. It was a, uh, it was only PG-13. If it sort of made it, perhaps, you know, added a bit more gore to it and gave it, gave it a higher rating. And uh, It was actually a very sort of short film, I think. Uh, if it actually made it a bit longer, it would have been a better film, I think. Uh, but I also thought it was you know, a pretty good flick. Uh, the second movie I didn't like necessarily as, as much. Um, it's more of a sort of a... It's more of a sort of a normal sort of standalone movie. I didn't necessarily class it as perhaps a Predator uh, type movie. So they sort of added in, you know, sort of... Teenagers, you know, you know, trying to have sex, you know, type of stuff, and I just, yeah, I don't really see that it's been classed as a uh, predator movie. The next one I got is actually uh, one I wanted to pick up for quite a while. Uh, I got the uh, Quantum of Solace. Uh, I do, do really sort of have uh, Casino Royale. Um, I, ha I have sort of seen some before. I sort of wanted to, you know, pick it up, uh, you know, to sort of get the set, and also because of the new Skyfall movies coming out soon, so I want to sort of catch up. Um, a lot of people don't seem to like this movie for some reason. I'm not quite sure why exactly. Um, so it's one of, the, one, of the, one of the worst James Bond movies, but oh, I thought it was a pretty good flick. It's more sort of kind of like a, a continuation of you know the, the Casino uh, Roy, Royale one. Uh, sort of the same, you know, the storylines, you know, all sort of linked link together and. Um, but I couldn't sort of find anything necessarily, you know, I'm, you know, I suppose you could say Barry, Barry, it's not necessarily as good as the uh, Casino Royale, but I think they're both, both good movies, and I'm sure some people would say that this, this one might, might be better than uh, Casino Royale. Um, I think people complained about the, the storyline, I reckon it was um, a, bit, a bit too science fiction-y, too sort of far-fetched and stuff, but I didn't think it was that, was that bad, and uh, some people don't like Den Den some people don't like Daniel Craig, but I was, I was think he makes a fairly good Bond. And uh, these other people said, reckon that they didn't like the villain. I thought, but I thought the villain was was pretty good. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, um, but oh, yeah, they're both both good movies, I reckon. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to sort of watching the Skyfall uh, when it comes out. When it comes out, I uh, also got another James Bond one uh, from Russia with Love, which I got in like a, a bulk DVD deal, which I got. Um, yeah, I think it's 963. I think this one came out. Uh, Sean Connery. Um, yeah, that's a good. That's a good one, which I watched the other day. Um, and then I got another uh, Sean Connery movie, uh, Hunt for Red October, um, which was 992. I think it came out based on a uh, book by John Clancy, uh, Tom Clancy. Sorry. Um, this, this is a really good movie. I've sort of seen it before and. Uh, well, that was quite a few years ago, so I watched this one the other day, and uh, yeah, good sort of suspense type film. Uh, you know, Sean Connery is like a Russian, and uh, I think he decides to sort of uh, defect to America, and uh, he's like the, you know, the captain of like the, the Red October, which is like a, a submarine, and um, so he's sort of on his way from Russia to America, and uh, the, the Americans aren't really quite sure if he's, def if he's actually defecting or he's... He's planning to sort of blow up America, you know, sort of thing. So they're a bit unsure and got to try and find out. And uh, the Russians are sort of after him, to, you know, because they want to, they don't want him defecting, so they want, they want to get him and get the Red October back and stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought that was, a, that was actually a really good, a good, a good one. Um, another one I got, the, A Few Good Men, which is one of the films that I've seen a few times and really, really enjoyed quite a lot. Um, it's actually it's about a marine that sort of dies and. Uh, I think it's like two marines sort of get on trial, you know, because you know, I reckon that the two marines sort of killed him, and and then you know Tom Cruise and uh, Demi Moore have got to try and you know they're they're like one of the uh, in the courtroom and they've got to try and work out what sort of happened and how, how this marine died, and because uh, I think maybe that you know this is the, the death sort of been covered up a little bit, and uh, I think uh, Jack uh, Nicholson, I think he's in he's in in the, in the um, I think he's, he's like one of, the, one of the superior officers. I think he's sort of, I think that he's sort of covering up some information and stuff. But uh, this is actually, yeah, a good movie, good sort of you know courtroom drama, and I think it just had a really good sort of storyline to it. And ah, that's that's really good. 
Uh, another one I got is uh, I really sort of one that I sort of wanted to watch of for a while. And I sort of heard a lot of uh, good things about. Uh, it's called uh, Brazil. I think it came out in 1986 or something. Uh, Terry Gilliam, Gilliam uh, directed it. Um, a bit hard to perhaps explain the storyline of this one. It's kind of seen like a futuristic uh, alternative sort of um, world type thing, and where everything's sort of run by a corporation type thing. And um, I think, yeah, sort of think it's like a bit of a mistake. <laughs> In, in you know it had like it's really sort of um, corporate and lots, lots of everything's sort of done with paperwork and you know if you want to get anything done you've got to you know fill out ten forms and get them checked and signed and stamped and you know all the sort of you know uh, bureaucratic not nonsense type stuff you know and uh, basically it's, I think it's like a mistake and uh, a guy gets like an, an order has been sent out and he's been he got arrested and was was being tortured and he ends up sort of dying. So the, the you know the corporation or the government's got to try and sort of cover it up and you know, work out what you know what what happened why they picked up the wrong man type thing and uh, that's that's a, just yeah it's a bit hard to explain that's essentially the storyline to it and um, but it's very sort of great sort of use of practical effects and very sort of weird and you know got you know typewriters or very, very sort of a bit of a, a mixture of sort of retro and futuristic type stuff you know, got really old key uh, typewriters with sort of you know, digital screens, I suppose, and lots of art design to it and stuff. Uh, but that's, yeah, it was, I didn't sort of mind it. I think it was like a two hour film, and um, it's probably something like I wouldn't watch all the time. It was, I did sort of, some stages I did sort of struggle to get through it a little bit. But that's, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Um, another film I've heard a lot of good things about, and uh, I actually did sort of watch, I think I watched it twice <laughs> over the last couple of days because I did sort of really, really, really enjoy it. Uh, I got the American Psycho, which, yeah, heard a lot of good things about it, and uh, Christian Bale, he's based on a, a novel and very sort of yeah, horrible things happen. Lots, lots of sort of, you know, sort of murder and rape and stuff in it, and horrible things. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit hard to sort of explain <laughs> in a few words, I suppose. So actually Christian Bale is like a, he works in like Wall Street and he's a very rich uh, person, you know, all these expensive suits and lots of money and stuff and um, it's, yeah, sort of hit, bet him and he sort of, I don't know, he sort of goes out and sort of kills people and, you know, it's very, you know, kind of like a, more of a little bit of Dexter, the, the TV show Dexter type thing, you know, um, he's like, you know, he has like a normal job, you know, sort of during the day and then at night time he, you know, sort of goes out and sort of kills people type thing, <laughs> picks up um, hookers and you know kills them and stuff like that. Um, but it's very yeah, it's very interesting. It has a lot, a lot of layers to it, I think. Um, sort of a you know, comment on sort of the, the culture, I suppose, eighties Wall Street culture and you know, man's world and um, how they're sort of you know obsessed with sort of wearing you know expensive suits and getting their perfect haircut and uh, this big sort of scene in the beginning with. Uh, with Christian Bale sort of getting ready, he's like his morning ritual, having having a shower and uh, putting a special cream on his face and getting a, a pack for his eyes and uh, you know working out and you know, big, a big in depth about what sort of what, what he uses and how long for and all sorts you know all this sort of stuff he does for himself and uh, you know, just, you know just, just the scenes with like the their, um, business cards and. Of all these men are sort of looking at, at each other's cards and you know trying to outdo each other with the cards and stuff. But the cards are really the, the, pretty much black and white, but they've just got slightly different lettering and you know that, that one's slightly better than the other than the other person's card. And it's yeah, definitely really interesting. Lots of levels sort of like this movie. Um, all I got is um, uh, Adventures of Tintin, which is a pretty good film. Um, I saw in the cinema and. Watched this again recently when I, when I got it on Blu-ray. Um, I was a big sort of fan of the, the, the cartoon series when I was a kid and used to watch it all the time. And um, I think so. In some ways, this movie didn't necessarily sort of blow me away. I mean, I think there's sort of like three sort of Tintin stories sort of put together and stuff, just sort of make the movie. And so I, so I had sort of seen all this this storyline before, and um, so it wasn't necessarily anything sort of fresh and new or space to me. But it's still, it's got really sort of great visuals to it, and you know, good sort of film, good acting, and good voice acting, and uh, great visuals, and uh, written by you know, Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson. Um, so definitely a good movie. It's just 
not necessarily anything perhaps new, I suppose, for me anyway. But I nice, enjoyed it. I uh, also got uh, American Pie uh, Reunion to sort of uh, finish off my uh, sort of set. I've got the first three and this is about the fourth. Um, but I thought it was actually a good, a good flick. Some people didn't seem to like it that much. Um, but it's nice to sort of see them sort of grow as characters, I suppose, from the first movie up to this movie. And, which I guess is you know, what it's all about, you know, reunion, I suppose. They come back, coming back together and meeting out with each other. And, uh, but that's, yeah, it's definitely a, a good one. Um, I got uh, Wrecked, which is a film that I was, I think it was one of my top, I think it was a top of three, I think, films of, favourite films of last year, which I really did enjoy this one. Uh, essentially, uh, uh, Adrian Brody he sort of wakes up in like a, 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 a car crash, sort of down, down, he's down like on a hill or something, down like a cliff or something, he's sort of stranded there and stuck in the car and he, can't, he just can't sort of remember why he's there or what happened or, you know, how he got into this accident type thing and... So, just sort of about him sort of just trying to get out of the car and try and crawl to safety type thing. Um, it's a very sort of slow burning film and I think a lot of people sort of, I uh, sort of perhaps found it a bit boring, but I, I just did really enjoyed it a lot actually, I thought it was really good, really, because you sort of want to know what was going to happen next, you know, type thing. Um, so I should look forward to watch, re-watching this one again. Um, that's a, yeah, it's a good one, I re re recommend that one. Uh, and I've got uh, Kick-Ass with the sort of the cartoon sort of slip cover. Um, I thought I was this one a year or two ago, I think, and I really wouldn't mind perhaps watching it again, which is sort of why I bought it. Uh, yeah, a lot of people already know, you know what it's about, so I won't necessarily go into that one. Um, and I've got two more to go. I think I'm, yeah, <laughs> I don't know about too long of a video. Um, I've got the Marilyn Collection Blu-ray, it's got seven movies of hers, you know, in like a pack sort of thing, and uh, I think it says 60 bucks on there, but I actually got it for a lot cheaper than that, got it for a good price, um, it's got, uh, Gentleman Prefer Bronze, Blondes, Blondes, uh, How to Marry a Millionaire, uh, River of No Return, uh, There's No Business Like Show Business, uh, Seven Year Rich, Some Not Got Hot, and The Misfits. Um, so I'm sort of looking forward to watching that. Um, and then finally, this will be the last one. Uh, I got a film from 1955 uh, called The Lady Killers, uh, which stars uh, Alec Guinness, uh, Cecil Parker, uh, Peter Sellers, and Frankie Howard. Uh, I actually watched this one a lot when I was a kid because it was one of my favourite. My, 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 my grandpa, my grandmother's favourite movies, uh, so she she, she she sort of put it on all the time and stuff. Um, actually, it's sort of about Alec Guinness and he sort of he answers like a a dad is there's, there's like a woman she's she's got like a, an old woman she's got like a, a room to let, so he sort of you know acquires and sort of you know acquires the ad and sort of moves in and he sort of says he's got some friends and they're all in, in like a band in like like a, like, a, like a string quartet band or something and so, so she, they sort of they want to know if they can sort of practice there and she says that's okay sort of thing and uh, but that's actually true they're actually sort of bank robbers and the whole uh, the whole sort of music thing is just like a cover to sort of yeah so they can sort of s sit down and sort of organize this bank robbery that, that they want to do uh, type thing um, but yeah that's, that's definitely a good movie I think it was like a remake a Tom Hanks movie um, which came out a few years ago um, so I've never, I haven't sort of seen that one yet. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really good sort of film. I think I watched it in black and white. But this is actually in colour. This this edition. Um, but yeah, definitely a a really good sort of film. Film this one. Um, yeah, essentially, yeah, they sort of plan this robbery and um, they need someone to sort of you know, pick up. Like they rob the the the, you know, the police car, which has got the money, and they sort of they so they get the money and they. They've got to find a way to sort of get someone to sort of you know, escape with the money. So they get the little, the little old lady to sort of do it for them without her really sort of knowing that, that she's doing it sort of thing. She sort of just asks to go down to the train station and pick up this this trunk for the you know, for the uh, Alec Guinness character. And, um, and she, she sort of brings the trunk back sort of thing, back, back to them. and But she doesn't sort of know that she's doing it sort of thing. <laughs> but she, she sort of finds out and... Well, that's a sort of spoil what happens after that, but uh, anyway, but that's yeah, it's a good movie. Okay, so I'm you know, running out of breath a bit, I think. So that's yeah, that's sort of most of the stuff that I've sort of picked up 
uh, this month. I do have some a lot more stuff. I think I picked up a few more things, but I won't sort of show them. Uh, yeah, so that's update. Uh, you know, if you want to leave some comments below, that'd, that'd be great. Uh, if you've sort of seen any of these films, you know, leave, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you thought of them. Uh, yeah, so until next time, I'll see you later on. Bye.